video, I'm going to show you how to operate the range repricer. The repricings page has a lot of settings on it, but in this video, I'm just going to demonstrate the range repricer. For all the other settings in the repricings page, you can find a link in the description to each of those videos. So here I am in the eSync homepage, and if you want to go to your to your repricing settings, all you need to do is click on the store that you want to go to. So if you only have one store, you'll just click that one store. But in my case, I'm going to click this main store here. And to go to the range repricer, I'm going to click settings, repricing. And in this case, I'm going to choose Amazon.com. And I'm going to scroll down to the range repricer. So this whole box right here is the range repricer. I'm not going to go over anything else in this video. So in this video, it's just going to cover the range repricer. For all these other settings, you can look in the description or in the playlist that this video is in. Okay, so I'm going to go over a, a little bit of terminology so that I can be clear on what the range repricer is doing. So anytime that I say the source market price, what I'm talking about is the Amazon.com price. And the reason I'm saying that is because that's the source market that I'm in right here. So if I was doing Walmart.com, this range repricer would be based off of the walmart.com price. The range repricer is always gonna base the profit margins that you enter off of the source market price. So for simple math, I'm gonna change this to 0% and $5 fixed. And I'm gonna click save. So what these settings are gonna do is, is make sure that I get $5 profit off of every sale. Everything from $0 all the way up is gonna grant me $5 profit once the sale is made. This range repricer is also going to factor in your eBay fees and your PayPal fees and your eSync fees. So no matter what item you sell, if the item on Amazon is $1, the range repricer is gonna mark it up to about six or $7. So that's going to account for the source market price of $1. It's going to account for your $5 fixed profit, and then it's gonna account for all of your fees. So if your price on amazon.com is $100, it's going to increase the price by $5 first, and then it's gonna increase it another a roughly 13% to account for all of your fees. So the total price on eBay is gonna be about $118. So that's basically how the formula works for the range repricer. So that's the fixed profit settings. I'm gonna show you what the percent profit settings will look like. So I'm gonna change this to $0 on the fixed profit and I'm gonna change the percent profit to 10% and I'm gonna click save. So now anything that's $100 on Amazon is gonna get marked up $10 because 10% of the source market is $10. So I'm, I'm using a $100 item on Amazon because the math is a little bit easier. So the item on Amazon.com is $100. It's going to mark it up 10%, which is an additional $10. I don't have anything in the fixed profit, so it's not going to increase it there. And then it's going to increase it to account for the eBay fees, which is roughly another 13%. The reason I say 13% is um, typically the eBay fee is 9 or 10%, and then the PayPal fee is almost 3%. So it equals almost 13%. So it's going to raise it another 13 or $14. So your price on eBay is going to be about $124 or $125. What if I have an item on Amazon that's only $3 and with a 10% profit margin, you would you would net 30 cents off that sale, which isn't really a whole lot of money. So what you can do is you can adjust your minimum profit. Let's say you want a minimum of $7 on every sale. So I'm going to type 7 here and I'm going to hit save. So in the example from before that was a $3 item on amazon.com where you would only yield 30 cents profit, it's gonna mark it up another $7 to make sure that you're at least getting $7 off of the sale. So the minimum profit is kind of like an or argument against the percent profit and the fixed profit. So if your profit percent and your fixed profit are only three or $4, it's gonna check and make sure that the minimum profit is at least $7 and mark it up to, to gain to that amount. Okay, so now I'm gonna show you how you can adjust your settings to have even more customization over your repricing settings. Okay, so I'm gonna show you how you can edit your range repricer so you can have a lot of customization over your repricing settings. And I'm also gonna explain a little bit more about how the minimum profit will work better for you whenever you have settings like that. So I'm gonna open this up five more settings. And all you need to do to open up more settings is click this little plus sign on the right. And you can have as many of these as you want. So I'm gonna open it up to five more and I'm gonna edit the settings here. So I want everything from zero to $25 at the source market to have 20% profit and zero fixed. But I wanna make sure I make at least $12 off of every sale. That way really lows price 
priced items on Amazon, I'll still make a pretty good profit. And then everything from $25 up to $50, maybe I only want 15%, I'm going to put a zero fixed profit, and I still want to make sure I'm getting at least $12 minimum off of each sale. And then everything from $50 up to $75, maybe I only want 12% profit, and I'm going to put zero here still, but I want a minimum profit of at least $20. And I'm going to change this setting from $75 to $100, and maybe I only want 10% profit, I'm going to put zero fixed in here, and I want a minimum profit of at least $30. And then everything from 100 on up, maybe I only want 8%, and I want a fixed profit of zero, and I want a minimum profit of at least $35, and I'll click save. So what this is gonna do is make sure that the minimum profit works really well with the profit percent margins, because a really low priced item on the percent isn't gonna yield very much money. So your minimum profit works well with the percent profit. Okay, so if you do some customization on your own with these settings, you'll learn a whole lot about your niche, whatever it is that you're selling, and you'll learn a lot about what kind of profit margins work for you. You can adjust these settings, and the more you customize it, the more you'll learn about your own sales and about your own profit margins that work well for you and your store. One thing to note here, the higher your margins are, the fewer sales per day you'll make, but the higher profit per sale you'll make also. Selling on eBay is really a numbers game. The more listings that you have, the more sales you're going to make. But where this becomes a problem is when you have really low margins like this. I'll pause the video and show you. Okay, so now I've set the settings to really, really low margins where I'm only going to get 5% profit off of each sale and I'm going to get 50 cents fixed fixed off of each sale. So if I have a whole lot of listings on eBay right now with these settings, I'm going to make a lot of sales per day. And when I say a lot of listings on eBay, I mean over 10,000 listings. So if you got 10,000 or 15 or 20,000 listings on eBay with profit margins like this, you're going to make over 100 sales per day, I would expect on most stores with that many listings and this low of profit margins. And the problem that causes is now you're going to have a lot of people messaging you on eBay about if you can do a better deal on eBay, or if the price is correct, or if you have another size of that item. And that's that's a lot to manage whenever you have that many listings and that many emails coming in from your buyers. And of course, whenever people ask you if you can make a better deal on certain items, typically the answer is going to be no whenever your profit margins are this low in the first place. So what you can do to counter that is adjust your settings to something like this. Okay, so here's some settings that I've set. I'm going to save these settings. And these settings are going to be good for if you have a lot of listings, like over 10 or 15,000 listings on eBay. This is going to help you have fewer sales per day, but a lot more profit per sale. And profit margins like this with sales really are attainable. I have my own profit test store that I use and I've edited my settings to something similar to this. And I'll usually make between five or 15 sales per day with margins like this. And what this helps me do is I have a lot fewer sales per day but it's a lot easier to manage. I don't have as many returns, where before, whenever I was doing maybe 70 or 80 sales per day, I would have five or 10 returns per day to do, and then I had a lot of emails to answer also from all of my previous buyers about questions about their product, or problems with it, or maybe they didn't know how to use the product correctly. So this is a lot easier to manage. I don't have to worry about paying what they call VAs or virtual assistants, and I can handle all of my store and all of my customer service the way that I want it to be handled, which is very important for me, so that's a big plus for me to be able to set settings like this and have fewer sales per day with a lot more profit per day. With profit margins like this, I'll usually make somewhere in the ballpark of maybe $150 to $300 profit per day after all of my fees. And I'll show you a little clip of my orders page so you can see that profit column. Okay, so here's my profit column page. And I've got everything blacked out that's, I've got everything blacked out in the middle that's got the private information, but you can see the dates on the right. And what I usually do is on the end, on the last order of that day in the notes field, I just kind of total up um, how much I made on that day, and I just entered in there for my own for my own records in the future. So you can see on this day, on the twenty sixth, um, if I add up all these sales, I made roughly one hundred seventy nine, maybe one hundred eighty dollars there after the changes added up. On the twenty fifth here, maybe I did. Let's see, two, four, six, eight. Looks like I did nine orders. And if you add this up, it should be roughly 316 bucks, maybe a little more. Um, you see a negative here on the $80.29. I'm going to click that eBay transaction. What this is is a buyer canceled this order, so I'll show you what that looks like. So here's this error that pops up for this buyer. 
um, this is what happens whenever a buyer cancels and cancels a transaction. We'll edit this in the future too, so that um, it so that it reflects better. Instead of showing a negative, it'll actually show just a zero on instances like this. So I'll keep scrolling down. You can see how much profit I did per day on some of these sales. So this 137 here wasn't a very good day for me. And here's some of the rest of the way down. Here's another negative. So this was a canceled order as well. Here's an order where I probably this what I probably had to do here was cancel this order on Amazon, add the new item ID from Amazon. So here was a great day. I made $479 on this day. Here's another good day, $327. Um, here's another manual order that I probably had to do here and cancel that other one. So this is basically how I run my operation on my on my eSync orders page and what I do in the notes field. So you can kind of see how I set all this up and what I do with my profit margins. So with settings like this, you can easily have similar results. People also will ask me if I use promoted listings and yes, I do. I promote my listings. So I've got about 20 something thousand listings that are promoted you need to be able to have the seller limits to do that also because with promoted listings you have to either have sold it once or you have to have two quantity inside your ebay listings and to have two quantity you're gonna have to have double your limits so if you're just starting out it can take a long time to be able to hit margins like this and to be able to promote your listings but anytime that i've ever suggested somebody to use promoted listings they've always had a lot of success out of it okay that's it for this video if you have any other questions i hope that i can help and i hope that if you like this video please click subscribe in the bottom right corner of the video. We have a lot of other great videos and playlists that can help you become a successful dropshipper. Thanks and we'll see you next time.